Pochi Wanmaru is going against Idol Corp. Uh, Nidhi Sanji is still in the news, at the very least Kuro Sanji is. And other VTuber news in this little segment that we have for you. Here's Idol Corp for everybody. You know, this is something that uh, is going to be in the news. I don't know if anybody's going to cover it, but of course I do cover things that I can. Idol Corp is going to be stuck in a little bit of a situation, conundrum, whatever you want to call it, with one of their talents, Pochi Wanmaru, which is uh, one of their longer standing talents, one of their talents that are, you know, being with them for a long time. This is the talent themselves. They haven't been doing anything since February 9th. If you look here, I was, you know, wanting to make sure if they had actually done anything. They hadn't done anything since about like February 10th, February 19th or so. The only response that you see here is pinned by her. I'm alive. I'm dealing with a lot right now and having meetings. I'm not really ready to talk about it yet. And I may be away for a while longer, but I figured I'd drop by and say hello. Please take care of yourselves. So this is one thing that I'm going to go over in the future. I'm going to go over soon and uh, I, because I do have the document that is going on. Before we start reading what Pochi wrote in regards to what happened with Idol EN and the management, let's look at the list that she's going to be talking about. This is a specific list of projects that she had. She had completed, they were in progress. Some of them were quarter one to quarter two to be decided, waiting for Mama availability, the artwork from Mama. The original song was quarter one to quarter two. Pochi Dojin Manga, same thing. The Gmod, the chat pick song cover, all of those things were completed, as well as everything that's mentioned here, which is add punishment on the wheel, curse foods, drink a five hour energy drink completed, conceptualize three future outfits together, quarter one, watch a cringe compilation, read out loud some of the most copy pastas, order a massive sushi platter, glow in the dark slime, play a horror game, write the greatest idol girls. All these things were completed. And uh, the Uwa roleplay, Pochi returns, Pochi appears on the billboard was done, the Uwa roleplay is quarter one to quarter two, renting an e-girl quarter one to quarter two, which is basically around this time. Uh, the shopping spree was done, game collab was quarter one, Pond Pups mascot, Minecraft, other things, plushies, other things were gonna be done. And now we're gonna be moving on to her words. And once again, I do want to remind you guys, I'm gonna keep reminding you during the reading that these are her words, and this is just one side of the story. So of course, Give them the respect that they deserve and give the words the respect that they deserve, but realize it is just one, one side of the story right now. This situation is a bit of an odd one. It is a bit of a, right now, controversial one, but I do want to cover it because I want it at least to be out there that, you know, we should hear both sides. Number one, I want to put that out there first. Listen to both sides. Uh, don't come out to your full conclusions until Idol has responded. Idol has not seen fit to respond yet because they are not like Niji Sanji that they're just going to be putting out a hateful message as a response, like a, a knee-jerk reaction. I think Idol, I'm hoping that Idol is either talking to Pochi or talking to someone else uh, to try to figure out the best way to go through this. And I'm, I'm hoping that there are talks in the background. But I want to mention that Pochi Wamaru has decided, from what I'm seeing, is decided to leave Idol for their own reasons. Um, not throwing any shade at Idol, not throwing any shade at Pochi, just want to say what's out there. And it starts with this. Let's talk about that time I worked at Not Starbucks. Not Starbucks has not provided an extended break notice despite my request to do so a long while ago. We all know Not Starbucks is Idol. And she's going to name it Not Starbucks because she's under, I'm pretty sure she's under contract. She doesn't want to be seen as disparaging them, etc. The situation has caused me significant worries. I wanted to take a break from accumulated stress from the very start to the present because of several issues that not Starbucks has had. While I recognize some internal issues are being worked on, there has been limited acknowledgement of responsibility for past incidents. I experienced difficulties primarily with my interactions with Mr. Man. He's calling Mr. Man as manager, I'm guessing. Not the Mr. Man we know as Doki Bird. Don't get it twisted. I don't think this is Mr. Man from Doki Bird. This is Mr. Man as like just the manager. I was scheduled to receive my share of the second promo event earnings given to me in support by customers in early February to help facilitate my move to another country, including various expenses like furniture, soundproofing, better equipment as agreed and being the sole reason for the second promo event. But I did not receive anything. The lack of funds has caused me financial hardship. I have been under the impression that I would be paid I was told it was sent or being sent at the time. And like the first promo event and all the other promo events, I should have received the funds on my next paycheck. I was then recently told that the funds were frozen due to saying I would not do my tasks, which is false. They, they, they say that it's false. This whole thing about not doing their tasks is false here. We are still discussing 
and in the middle of negotiations, there were mentions of other tasks over which I had no control over, e.g. not Starbucks minigame, not Starbucks stuffed mascot, and that I was what well, that was what I was thinking I was referring to. This second concerned me. This this one concerned me because I stated multiple times I could do my tasks. It seemed illogical as I had learned I would not receive the funds prior to this part in our negotiations. I was told by someone else at not Starbucks that the actual reason behind this was because I had a work leave notice active. Regardless, this shouldn't have changed anything since there was a significant established lapse of time before my leave and I was more than open to negotiate and compromise to do my tasks during that time and extend the work leave notice. This could be something in regards to uh, like has a big thing to do with maybe the way that the culture is. A lot of companies uh, will have something like that. We'll have a provision that if you're going to be leaving, your tasks are not going to be done by you. Uh, you are relieved of your tasks and then you are, you know, if it's an extended leave, they will relieve you of your tasks, especially if you're like in the middle of a big project or in the middle of something that needs to be done and completed sometime in, in the middle of your extended leave. So sometimes they will get rid of that. And I don't see that as a negative per se, but it is uh, something that didn't need to get negotiated. I will not be on one side or the other. I'm just putting things around here, as I said. On the start of January, I had issued a work leave notice because my experience is at not Starbucks. I wanted to emphasize, emphasize that issuing the work leave notice was not related to the promo event. I planned to see what was possible, what my options were, and what we could agree on. Finish my tasks of the promo event and exit with no complications. So what she's saying here, what Pochi's saying here, is that they wanted to go through everything that they needed to do and not have complications and just figure out the best path to doing that from what I'm understanding here. Keep in mind, we are at the end of March as of writing this and I could have worked on tasks for the promo event this entire time. There were instances of undue pressure and coercion over the past months. This can be, you know, it is up to the person to see it that way or not. It could have been, could have not been. We don't know because Idly and like I mentioned, has not responded. Uh, so we don't, we only know one side of this, but it is a side that I, know, I think needs to be heard at the very least. Going back and forth, such as punitive terms and documents I was given to sign and threats. I refuse to sign anything for my own mental well-being and to protect my freedom. Other well-meaning individuals join in the negotiation near the tail end, but it was still unfruitful, as Mr. Mann refused to budge. In the end, I knew refunds might have to be issued despite having last option because of my financial situation and possible possibilities of resolving this. I was recently, very, recently made aware uh, by customers that upon asking for refunds, manage, messages sent by not Starbucks to customers indicated no refunds would be offered because I was presently working on and on my way to finishing my tasks, which they say was false as we had not yet come to an agreement while simultaneously claiming I would not do my tasks. So they were telling customers, according to what Pochi is saying here, uh, the management was telling customers when they wanted refunds for the certain tasks that were being done, uh, that the refunds couldn't be done because they were in the process of finishing those tasks and they would be completed, so there was a no, not a need to be refunded, which makes sense if you know the tasks that need that were products and other, other type of things like that would be completed uh, at a certain time. You're not going to get a refund because you're still going to receive your product. That type of thing. I can understand that point, but according to what she's saying, she was never asked to finish those tasks. She was actually told that she was not going to be able to finish those tasks, and that's why she was not going to get paid. I still haven't received anything either way. In the end, it is the right thing to do for customers because we were unable to find a way for not Starbucks to let me complete my tasks. I have been feeling very unwell because of this situation, and I made this known to not Starbucks. It has affected me mentally and physically where I have needed to see a doctor. Most days I feel very depressed and brain fogged, completely out of it, and I struggle to do anything, including coffee making. I have felt very lonely and isolated, worsening my anxieties. I am very exhausted. I will try my best. I have respectful, respectfully asked not Starbucks to respect my privacy and discontinue any further attempts to contact me. Despite holding evidence, I've chosen not to disclose further details out of consideration for the other baristas and non -Starbucks staff, not Starbucks staff. I believe it prudent for all parties to move forward and disengage from this matter. Continued engagement serves no purpose and will perpetuate harm and validate my experiences. So not Starbucks, it has made a mistake. Not Starbucks has had issues going forward and so far, they have not responded, um, which, like I said, if you're smart, you don't respond to these immediately. If you're smart, you don't get a knee jerk reaction. Niji Sanji hasn't been smart, but not Starbucks seems to be pretty smart on their end and just letting it simmer, see how it goes. 
see if they actually need to make any type of response, seeing if they actually need to make any type of changes in the way that they do things. So since one side has been seen, this is the side that I'm showing, of course, and this is the side that I will give the side as well to uh, not Starbucks. And I know who not Starbucks is. If they decide to put something out, I will put their message out here as well. So for now, this is what we have on here. My opinion is it sucks if all of this is true and they have the receipts as they say, it sucks. I can mainly attribute this to maybe a bad manager, one bad person in the in the bunch, but one bad one rotten apple does spoil the bunch. Uh, but I don't think this is indicative of a worse part inside of the organization unless more, more people speak out about it. Unless more people speak out about it and are like, yes, it was like that with me too. Yes, they were bad with me too. I'm going to take this as an isolated incident and bad communication and bad management in this situation, which can happen. People can make mistakes. People are human. They can definitely make mistakes. They can definitely do things that will screw them over. And I don't want that to be something that will uh, be seen as like hate towards this organization. That's all I have to say on this matter, though. I do hope that you guys can understand why I'm kind of taking a middle of the road thing. The issue that we're facing right now is Anna Alouette had a conversation with Kiara. That in and of itself is not a bad thing. Uh, the bad thing is the way that people are taking this. For example, uh, a lot of Kiara people are taking it as something very negative. Oh my God, I can't believe you did this. I was looking at quote retweets and the quote retweets freaking had people being extremely angry at Kiara for doing this. Thinking that, you know, because of the fact, Anna, don't you know what Anna has done in the past? Don't you know this and that? Well, here's a reminder. The stuff that she's done in the past and the stuff that she's accused of doing, it's all hearsay. It's all conjecture. It's all in a rat. It hasn't been proven one way or the other. It hasn't shown proven fact that this is exactly what she did, that she exactly did these things here and there. It is all assumed based on one leaker who could be very, I mean, he's had a lot of things that were correct so far. So he is, you know, there are reasons for people to believe in his, his stuff, but also it's just pure being logical and being reasonable. Don't believe it all out just in the open. So she met apparently, and Alouette and her met apparently during, um, Holofest. During Holofest, which happened like this weekend, this, this past week, uh, I think it was 15th and 16th in Japan. It happened around that time. And I think they had uh, another event that was right after that, but it was Hololive related. And they met during that time. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially meeting outside of the corporate structure. There's nothing wrong with that. But of course, people are going to be angry. And here's, this, here's what they say. Look, for better or for worse, we shouldn't end up policing who people interact with. Kiara herself has been through some very similar situations already when she wanted to collab with Vebe and everyone complained. This needs to be more widespread sentiment among fans. Kiara is her own woman and should be free to collab with whoever she wants as a professional too. She naturally and she's naturally very friendly and extroverted, but also has a good judge of character. Interacting with Nidisanji talents doesn't mean she endorses anything they do. And that's the important part. Just interacting with them, just tact talking with them in a friendly manner does not mean that, yep, she puts a rubber stamp of approval, the Kiara KFP stamp of approval on everything Enna, Illyra, or anyone else has done in Niji Sanji. It is a professional relationship a lot of times. It is an outside of work relationship where like Kiara is not going to really be trying to dig in to anything that Enna has done in her past or Illyra has done in her past. It's just in the moment at that time. It doesn't mean, like I said, repeating does not mean she gives a rubber stamp of approval of everything that has been done by Anna. It really is unfortunate that the community has gotten to this point with Niji Sanji. I don't approve of this. I don't approve of people going like this to anybody that interacts with Niji Sanji. Let them interact with who they want. Like I've always said, if you are an enjoyer of Niji Sanji, if you are someone who has an Oshi and will not stop watching that Oshi, go ahead and do it. You are not going to get any hatred from me. You are not going to get any type of negativity from me. I'm going to be like, go ahead. If your Oshi is making you happy, making you laugh, cry for all the good reasons, then go ahead and do it. You have my blessing. You don't need it. You absolutely don't even care most of the time, but you have my blessing because that's the way it should be in the community. So this is where rats are going to pop out. More than likely, some rats are going to pop out from this. Kota Katora Hime hasn't been on YouTuber X for a whole month and people are wondering what's going on. Is, uh, is it a stealth suspension? Is it someone, you know, her just taking a break because of what happened with Yozora Mel? Uh, is she sad that her friend got uh, removed from the company that she loves so much, from the company that Mel loves so much? Uh, is it just she knows that there's a lot of hate going towards her right now? 
a lot of dislike, a lot of anger, a lot of vitriol going on right now, and she wants to stay away from it. What is it? Because for someone to be away from Nidhi Sanji that way, it's either stealth suspension, as in they're skinwalking as you, they took away your access to all your accounts, or you're actually taking a break, or maybe you're thinking of graduating. There's a lot of things that can happen, but these are just ideas. These aren't something that is true or not true or whatever. It's just an idea. I'm just putting that out there, putting it into the ether. It's still unconfirmed in every single way. And now we're looking at Vox's comeback stream March 23rd. But it isn't where you would expect. It's not on YouTube. It's on Billy Billy. Why is it on Billy Billy? Only he would know. But Billy Billy is a place where his kindred loves him so much. Whereas kindred is all about Vox in that point. So let's take a closer look at what's going on. Says Vox EN official. Millions of thanks message from Vox Akuma. It is all on um, May 22nd. Yesterday at 1430. Live broadcast in 1900. China time. I don't know if they have like different you know, zones like we have. I don't know if it's Eastern China time, Western Chinese time. Like right here we have Pacific Standard Time. They may have, I don't know what they have over there. I wouldn't be able to say. I don't know if it's like a, 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 a whole country-wide time. Live broadcast in 1900 on March 23rd for B only. Don't miss it. It's for Billy Billy only live broadcast. And again, he's he, this is in Chinese. So his kindred, this is one thing I wanted to mention. His kindred, the people who really love him, the, the, the women who adore him, seem to be a large amount on Billy Billy, or at least they're large enough amount that he could put this only on Billy Billy and still be considering that it is okay. That is something that I find interesting uh, because you would think, you know, he has a large following also on uh, on YouTube. You'd expect that he would also have it on YouTube. Like I said, uh, he has a large following on YouTube. So you would expect that it would also be on YouTube. You would expect that all this stuff would still be on YouTube and would not just be Billy Billy because he has his simps there. Man, the same crazy ass Chinese fans that wish for Doki to, bl to blank herself are even even after knowing what happened to her. The Chinese stands will be Chinese stands. It's really hiding in with the Chinese. Actually, he did one stream between Selene's termination and now it was a members only stream on 3-2024 titled RuneScape Update. That lasted for 9 hours, 45 minutes, and 40 seconds. Not going to spend the money to figure out what he did on it, but here it is. The RuneScape update, according to Holodex, he had that there as a members only thing. That was done on 3-20-2024, which is two days ago. This is something that Vox Akuma did, and he has the right to do wherever he wants. It just, it looks bad. It's bad optics. It's bad PR because it looks like you're hiding. If you do it only membership, and then only that, it looks like you just want a select few to see you not the people who can't afford your memberships and not the people who are just maybe lurkers or just watching occasionally it looks really bad but he like i said he does have the choice to do it because billy billy is a large fan base for him so he has that choice which is fine apparently this is causing a bit of a stir hopefully it is a joke but if it's not it's might be way too mean. Let's see. Like one time, my friend's grandpa died, and I used his friend's at like his grandpa's ashes to like plant, you know, like a seed. And I that is evil. Messed around with it. I destroyed the little pot. Of that is this evil. In, but I didn't. I didn't think it was that bad. Were you and a kid, or did you, you just do this like, like last year? Me and everything. <laughs> I was like, what? That's... why are you angry at me, buddy? Like it's just your grandpa's ashes. Yeah, no, it has to be a joke. It has to be a joke. So yeah, people can be mad sensitive. You know what I mean? Mad and, like, sensitive. One other time, like like my friend's goldfish annoyed the fuck out of me. So like I I wanted to see if it could swim up current the toilet. And he was now he's just trying to be edgy. About, like, I think he's trying to be edgy for five years. Kind of bullshit. People can be sensitive as hell, bro. Don't, yeah, don't mind Yeah, I think he's just trying to be edgy. It's like really, I I I I mean I don't know. I just don't see people as being that mean. But if he is that mean, I don't like that he did that. I don't like that uh, that kind of stuff is happening, that people are pushing that kind of stuff. I don't like it. I don't like it at all uh, because it's just not, it's not, um, it's not kosher. It's not good. It says, wow. Okay, I don't care if this is just a joke. F you, Hex. I do believe your reply is the correct response. Um, Hex is apparently an effing psychopath because if he does that, then yes, he's a psychopath. Even if it was a joke, no one's effing laughing. Don't have any words for this. It's in case it gets taken down, the streamable part, equivalent to grave desecration, animal abuse for the other. Ironic that he said that people can be super sensitive about stuff when he was upset about Zion making an R joke when he's past trauma of sexual assault when he was younger. In short, Hex, you are no different. And I will agree with that. Um, the fish thing, the fish thing isn't such a big issue, but like the desecration thing, it can cause trauma it can cause hurt of course 
SA is way different than that kind of stuff. Way different. But it's still an asshole is an asshole, of course. Like the other thing, like I said, the other thing is way hey, different. But yeah, bad jokes are bad jokes, and they should never be done, should never be said. You should respect each other, and you should respect uh, the spaces that people find safe and the things that might anger somebody else. You should really respect that. Now, the what the effing F, that's pretty much the response. He was looking at him like, what the heck? That was an accurate and appropriate response. Obscure is a 3D app. It's basically kind of like, I guess, VTube Studio in that sense. And you can have interactions with it, just like VTube Studio can have certain interactions with it. Things like that. It's kind of like a broadcasting application built on Unreal Engine 5, as it says here. And um, this is what they had to say today. This was something that was mentioned here. Obscure, notice of closure. It is with a heavy heart that we announced that our departure from the virtual space. Over the past three years, we have enjoyed creating and building an application that broke barriers and expectations in content creation and want to thank those who supported us along the way. Due to the heightened focus on its core business, Movella, which I guess is the person that was above uh, that, has decided to limit investments in non-core businesses. Accordingly, the obscure platform will no longer be active, effective March 31st, 2024. Thank you for once again for your support Keep pushing boundaries and continue making your stream unreal. Obscure team. You guys were awesome right down here. Players, you guys were awesome to chat in to chat with and seeing the cool stuff you created uh, to help out the VTubing tech was insanely inspirational. Any projects that allows me to go insane with sliders deserves praise. This is Playerts, which I guess was a part of um, uh, involved in this whole thing. Myself and Flash.gg wish you the best and hope that you can chat and see you guys soon. Uh, down here, Rob Roman, thanks for all the hard work you guys have put in this product. It definitely had potential, but with un unfortunately, uh, some people just aren't ready for it, and that can be upsetting. Good luck with your future endeavors. Us, I wish you all the best for your endeavors. The tool y'all built was hella cool. GG, GG's, no. What's the plan with the physical trackers? <clears throat> Have they turned into paperweights, or is there a possibility they'll be updated to be usable in other broadcasting programs? I don't think they're going to be doing anything. I think they're just going to be getting rid of it. And, um, you know, that can be good or bad. I mean, depending how you see it. Obscure. The Twitch interactions part is what I wanted to look at. These are the things you could have done with Obscure. The article we're going to be talking about is how you can quickly set up interactions. They have the interactions right here with Twitch points and, um, you know, the fire in the background with Unreal. You can go into your creator dashboard, extensions, Obscure, add it in there. And then you could have your interactions through chat, set it as a component. And it basically made it so you can have different chat interactions. Like you can change it to a bedroom scene. You can change it to empty environments. You can change the environments in the back and um, you can allow your audience to interact with it using the Twitch extension. And it was just, it was a good one. It was all Unreal Engine 5, which took a lot of effort for them to make, of course. And it was a lot of work that they put into it. I just wanted to show you guys what it was all about. And it's sad that they're going to be leaving because it was an interesting thing. It it what didn't work very well for me because I didn't know how to use it very well. I tried it a little bit. I didn't work very well. Uh, that's not their fault. It's more me, most more than likely. Just wanted to let you guys to see what was a little bit behind everything, everything that they had. Here are people reacting to the news. Uh, of course, people will have their own reactions. Says, I will no longer be acting as art director for Obscure, the art gun. He acted as art director. Thank you, Movella, for the opportunity to meet some amazing people. Really enjoyed your time. He was doing a lot of work for Obscure from what I've read from people that have told me stuff. He was doing a lot for Obscure. So it's, it really does suck. Nagila, a Fennec VTuber, says this was so cool and super innovative. It just didn't have the support it needed to continue. To be honest, I tried it, but was so confused, but the potential was there. Same thing here. I tried it, but was confused as hell. Well, I was trying to get things set up to stream on here, but I guess I'll scrap that idea. Good luck to the Obscure team and their future endeavors. I hope that the technology can be pushed to something else. I hope that it can be made, uh, like, if, since they're not going to be making money off of it, I hope that they can make it, like, open source so that people can actually try doing something. Pudizu, I had a great time working here under Art Gun. So this is another employee. Learned lots of amazing coworkers uh, and amazing coworkers. Sad to see it end, and, but hopefully it opens new opportunities, which I think it will for Pudizu, a lot of other people here. While it was pretty critical of obscuring their business model, losing a 3D VTuber app is like an L for the VTuber community. It's a big L. The people who made Obscure are hard workers who had big vision. While it's sad to see this, I hope 3D VTubing tech keeps going on. I hope so too. Sad to see it close. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, people are very sad to see it go away. People, uh, you know, deservedly so, are find it unfortunate that it is disappearing. 
and I do wish the best for the Obscure team, and I wish them the best in everything that they do. That was everything in regards to everything that I have for you today, and this evening at least. Uh, a lot of things were mentioned. Remember the Pochi thing, it is one side, and we do want to hear from Idol before we make a full decision. Uh, mistakes can be made. I just want to remain as objective as I can to this thing, but also give Pochi the respect she deserves and give Idol the respect that they deserve. Uh, if you have any comments on any of the things that were mentioned to in today's episode, I appreciate if you put them down below. Also, if there's any criticisms or anything like that, anything that you have, I'll put them down below. Uh, take a look in the description for all my social media and in front of you for any videos that you might find interesting. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. And please, please just be wonderful people that you always are.